Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's EKG. We've got a good case for you this week. We have a 60 year old male who says he's just feeling very weak and very tired and just doesn't feel very good. He's having these intermittent kind of vague chest pains when he's exerting himself, but he has a hard time describing them to you. So you move ahead, you get your vital signs, heart rate's 52, blood pressure is 155 over 82, so mildly elevated, but not terrible. Satting okay on room air with a normal respiratory rate and a little bit of an elevated blood sugar. Um, very important point here, when you have elderly patients with vague complaints, just go ahead and get the 12 lead because a lot of times the vague complaints are precipitated by something going on with the heart and it's a quick, easy thing to take a look and either find a problem or rule out a problem right away. So we get our 12 lead and here's what you see. It's a nice clean 12 lead, good work engine seven. Uh, give you a second to take a look at it and then we'll go through it together. All right, so our rate here, uh, what do we think? The computer's telling me that it's 52, so I tend to like to find a QRS that's lining up with a thick red line. And this one's close enough here. And we can count down the thick red lines, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So just over 50, I'd agree with the computer. It looks pretty regular, so I think our little estimation here is generalizable to the whole EKG. We'll call it a rate around 50. Uh, rhythm. First we ask ourselves, is it regular or irregular? Just to the quick glance here, it looks like it's a very regular rhythm. Our next question though is, is there a P wave before every QRS? And as I'm looking at these QRSs here, this QRS looks very funny. It's a very tiny uh, R wave going down there, but I wouldn't quite call that a P wave. And I don't really see P waves anywhere else in this 12 lead. And so I would call this a junctional rhythm. There is a beat that's very regular, but it's not originating from the sinoatrial node because I do not see P waves. My guess is it's originating from above the sinoatrial node because uh, we'll look at our intervals here in a second, but it's a narrow QRS. So it's probably coming from the junction, the AV junction. First, we'll look at our axis though. We look at leads one, leads AVF. We're looking at the majority of the QRS vector in each of these leads. Lead one is up, AVF is down. We have left axis deviation here. And then our intervals. So I've mentioned this before. QRS is narrow, it's 96, it's less than 120. So we know that that beat is originating from above that AV node. Looking at our QT, we have a bradycardic rhythm. So I'm always cautious about long QT in bradycardic patients, but this one actually is only 384. So we're safe here. It's less than 450. If you remember, if it starts approaching 500, they're at risk for spontaneous arrhythmias. So we watch out for that. But this is a narrow QRS bradycardia with no P waves. Let's look at our ST segments here. I start with 2-3 AVF. Do I see any ST elevation, T wave inversion, ST depressions? No. I'll move to my high lateral leads here. Same thing. These baselines look nice. Same thing in the septal leads, anterior leads, high lateral leads. Um, I really don't see any ST segment changes that are concerning here. So what we're looking at is basically a junctional rhythm. And if you remember, the heart is designed to keep beating even if it's one of its pacemakers is not working. And so the ideal pacemaker to work is a sinoatrial node and that'll make the heart beat at 60 to 100 times a minute, give or take the situation, right? It can go faster if it needs to or slower if it needs to. But in general, 60 to 100, this will generate a P wave. Okay, um, it sends a signal to the AV node. If there is no signal from the SA node to the AV node, the AV node will take over and that will generate a beat between 40 and 60 beats a minute, which is what we see here. We have a rate of 50. So this is pretty classic. It'll give you a narrow QRS. So that's your clue that it's coming from above the ventricles here. And then just say this one starts stops working too, then the ventricles have the ability to take over, but not very well and not for very long. So you'll see a profound bradycardia with a very wide QRS if you have a ventricular rhythm. But what we have here is a junctional 
really a junctional escape rhythm. And you can have all kinds of junctional rhythms. You can have a junctional bradycardia where the rate is less than 40, so maybe this junction isn't really working as good, but it's trying really hard to. Right here, we have just a classic junctional escape rhythm. Rate of 50, it's right where you would expect it to be. It can be accelerated, so it can be over 60, or it can be tachycardic, it will give you a rate over 100. So really what you're looking for is the absence of P waves and the setting of a narrow QRS will give you a junctional rhythm. And then you can just define it based on the rate. So treatment for this, uh, you already have an AV node that's working. Atropine may actually help here. So if they're symptomatic from their bradycardia, go ahead and give atropine, it's not gonna hurt. This guy's stable, he's talking to you, he's got a good blood pressure, atropine may help. Okay. But if he gets where he's unstable, he's altered, his blood pressure is starting to get soft, he's getting more symptomatic, you need to be ready to pace. So keys about pacing, make sure you have your four leads on, you need to get electrical capture, then mechanical capture. There's always the question of sedation versus pain control. I prefer pain control, I'd give him a little bit of fentanyl if you have time, just because it's a little easier on the blood pressure. If you're pacing him, he's already unstable and versed, may either make his mental status worse or his blood pressure worse, and so fentanyl is a nice option before you start to pace. Make sure once you get your electrical capture you turn up an extra 10 till you get your mechanical capture once you get that go up another 10. Um, and then if that's not working or for whatever reason you can't get capture just remember you have epinephrine as an option too that'll increase the heart rate and the blood pressure. Here's one more look at this junctional escape rhythm EKG you define it by the lack of P waves and a narrow QRS in a bradycardic patient. And that is it for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.